Today in the news, we got some printed cooling, some NVIDIA Ampere, and Microsoft does us a solid. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with some cooling news. A trio of companies have been developing a CPU cooler to show what the future of liquid cooling might be. The SIS, EOS, and AM Metals have created a CPU block that is apparently 81% the size while being the same performance as the best in class solutions. How? Well, they 3D printed it. Now, of course, this isn't made in your typical 3D printer. They used an EOS M290 machine, which is meant to print metals. The design of the cooler is, well, let's just say it looks organic. The business development manager of the company who posted about this said that this design could be beneficial for all kinds of cooling, but specifically mentions gaming CPU cooling on the title of the post. Now, if they say that it's 81% the size of the same performance, they must have compared it to the likes of EK's water blocks, which are already pretty small. Anyways, the company will be at E3 this year, and I'm pretty pumped to see it in action. On the other hand, has anyone tried to make a CPU cooler out of the copper blends and filaments available for regular 3D printers? I'm curious to see if that would hold up. Moving on, on Monday, we learned that AMD formed a partnership with Samsung for the use of their Radeon DNA architecture in smartphones. Well, yesterday, another company has taken interest in Samsung, and it's none other than AMD's formal enemy, NVIDIA. Or is it Intel? No, it's NVIDIA this time. After Pascal at 14 nanometers, we had Turing at 12, and after Turing, we should see Ampere at 7 nanometers. Now, NVIDIA mostly used TSMC for their GPUs. They designed their process nodes in conjunction with the fact to ensure the best GPUs possible. But now it looks like Samsung will be Nvidia's new partner for Ampere's seven nanometer process, or just for the process. We're not sure if it's Ampere yet. According to EE Times, Samsung is aggressively undercutting TSMC's pricing, which is of course a good reason for the switch. Now it's not the first time that Nvidia sources chips from them, but usually it's on lower end cards. For example, the GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti were made by Samsung. They clearly want to be the biggest semiconductor manufacturer in the world, and it shows. After that, it looks like Microsoft decided to do a solid for PC gamers everywhere. On the 1903 update or later, you'll be able to enable variable refresh rate on any DX11 titles, even if the game doesn't support it natively. Now, of course, you need a G-Sync or FreeSync display for it to do anything, and you need a GPU that supports it. But it's a welcome addition to someone who wants to play older DX11 titles, or for games that just don't implement variable refresh rate at all. Also with Microsoft, they just teased a new Xbox desktop experience. If you open your Xbox app on Windows, it will prompt you that the app is being renamed the Xbox Console Companion and that it's dedicated for Xbox features and settings. Now that's pretty much all we've got, but with the recent changes to the game bar, the announcement of the Xbox Game Pass for PC, the variable refresh rate, and the changes to the Xbox app, it looks like Microsoft is really taking the PC gaming experience more seriously. I mean, Last year, Phil Spencer said that they still had a ton of work to do on Windows, and it really feels like the work is being done. Speaking of gaming, E3 starts next week, but we got some pretty big info coming right before. For example, Google Stadia is making some pretty big reveals today at 12 p.m. with their Google Stadia Connect. I plan on covering the whole thing, so maybe today is a double upload day or I'll just upload it tomorrow. Apparently, pricing and launch details will be there. Destiny 2, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and a few other big games are going to be announced for the platform. Anyways, stay tuned for that. As for Bethesda, we just got some info from Todd Howard regarding the two upcoming titles. We already knew that the Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield won't be at E3 this year, but Todd Howard just confirmed that Starfield has priority and that the Elder Scrolls fans should be very, very patient. Lastly, it looks like IKEA is moving into the gaming market with experimental 3D printed products. They partnered up with Unique to create the Upcoupla line of products. They'll be made from flexible materials and employ a UV resin 3D printer for the really complex shapes. There's a wrist rest which looks a little bit flawed. I mean, you're going to need one hell of a mouse pad to make sure that it doesn't like 
slide off. It does look quite flexible though. There's also a mouse bungee, which will also be available with the same aesthetic. And lastly, a kit of WASD keycaps that are sort of vented for airflow on your fingers. These products are customized to your wrist and hands through the IKEA slash unique app, and you can even have your clan name on it. I mean, IKEA has been used in the gaming scene for a while, but mostly for its desks, chairs, and maybe some game storage. But it's nice to see them offer more to the community. These products will only be available through the IKEA app though. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Nice.